The world we live in is plunging into a new digital age. Technology is moving farther, faster than ever. But what are the effects of technology on the people? And don't get me wrong, technology has its positives. Just look at this presentation. One of the biggest positives to technology is easy communication. People around the world can now keep in contact with one another through text, calls, and emails. You don't have to lose track of one another. Soldiers in Afghanistan used Skype to keep up with their families, and people who aren't technologically savvy at all, like my grandmother, can call me or even text me from time to time. Another positive is easily access knowledge. People around the world can get knowledge easily from their web-enabled phones by looking up articles on Google or downloading a book. You can know what's going on politically and economically up to the minute. And Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter allow us to know what our friends are doing up to the second. There's no gap in public knowledge on any level. And there are also economic advances that come from technology. There's a rising demand for all of these new e-books and iPhones and laptops. And so companies have to create more factories and more jobs to keep up with this rising demand. And so that way, they have more capital from all of the products. And that causes investors to want to invest more in the company, which benefits just about everybody. But maybe not everybody, because there are also negatives to technology that a lot of people don't know about or just choose to ignore. The first negative to technology is a loss of social skills. People, especially people my age, are losing the social graces that our parents tried so hard to pass down to us. I know people who speak in LOLs, hashtags, and JKs. I don't even know what they are talking about most of the time. I think that people text me all the time because they have a need for instant satisfaction. That's what technology is doing to us. Take friendships, for example. Most of the teenagers I talk to are now viewing friendship as hitting the accept button on a Facebook page. But that's not what friendship is. Friendship takes time and commitment and hard work to form a bond with someone that is truly meaningful and that will last throughout a lifetime. It's not hitting a button. If you thought about everything in life with the concept of instant satisfaction, going to school wouldn't be worth it because you could look up anything you need to know on Google. Reading a book wouldn't be worth the time because you can look up the plot on Wikipedia. And that's another problem, the internet. It causes violence and misguidance because basically everyone has access to it, even people younger than myself. So what's to keep someone from typing in a search address to Google and getting a website they really didn't need to find full of inappropriate things, or even worse, something that looks like a good thing but is really affecting us in a negative way. I know that because my brother loves to play the first person shooter games on various gaming sites. My parents have re recently started restricting him from these violent games, but the damage is already done. Because you see, our brains are just another piece of hardware that we use every single day. They can be po programmed and rewired just like any computer. Most adults have already got it wired into their brain that killing and violence is bad. So when they play these games, they don't get a negative effect that children do. Children are easily influenced because all the programs haven't been written quite as hard as in adults. They're starting to view violence equals reward as a standard in everyday life. When you look in America as a whole, starting in 2000, the adult violent crime rate has decreased by 3%, which is pretty good. But children are being overlooked. The number of school suspensions, expulsions, and juvenile offenders has tripled in that same amount of time. Tripled. And uh, when I'm talking about juvenile offenders, I'm not talking about thieves and vandals. I'm talking about children who commit violent beatings and even intentional homicide. Homicide. Why are children doing this? Well, Educause.com has made a clear link from early violent gaming to these violent acts in young children. And it's not just children who are being affected. Teenagers with all this easy access to social media are now choosing to do a new type of bullying, cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is where someone uses a social media or internet source to hurt someone and lower their self-esteem. And grown-ups will oftentimes say to someone who's being cyberbullied, well, you can just ignore the message. You can delete it. But who really does that? You'll read the message, and it will be stuck in your brain forever. You'll always know that someone said that about you. 
But the whole reason cyber bullies do this in the first place is because they lack the bravery to say this stuff to your face. And just thinking about that means that people are losing their own self-esteem through the bravery that comes from technology. And technology is everywhere. You can't avoid it. It's becoming a part of our everyday lives. Cars are using GPS, and we're using more and more e-books in school. Oak Ridge is trying to go paperless by the time I graduate, which is pretty good. It's much better for the environment than having to use tons of papers every day. But if you think about it, what if a classroom was completely computer and internet based, and then the internet went down? There'd be no way to further your learning experience for the day without a paper-based backup plan. And this also hurts me on a personal level because, let me face it, I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd for books. I love to read and write. And to me, holding a real book in your hands, whether it be fictional or non-fictional, is much better than actually reading it on a screen. Because books immerse you on a more physical, fuller level. You experience all of the sensory perspectives that a video just can't do. Video only shows you visual and audio perspectives, while in a story, you can feel all of the sensory perspectives. Visual, audio, you can smell it, hear it, and taste it, and feel it. And technology has just kind of become our master. We're losing these things. We're deciding that technology is better than these physical uh, these physical bonds that we have with the world. So here's what I believe we should do. I believe that we should make technology our servant, not our master. We can use it in our everyday lives to look up things we need to research, to write a paper, to communicate with our friends and family, but we shouldn't let it take us over. We should have the power to hit the off button. We need to make it our servant. So I challenge you to make a choice. The choice to choose the middle way, the way of both reality and digitality, the way where you can use both. Thank you.